Sketches of MD refers to Miles Davis. Um, I had the opportunity of working with Miles Davis for about five years and a half. And um, this title track, I actually took like pieces of that experience. Uh, the first tune, The Ring, is actually a represent representation of some of the members, for example, John Coltrane. Uh, the second one is actually myself, Intro to Africa. Uh, sketches of MD is for Miles Davis. Uh, Wayne's thing is for uh, Wayne Shorter. And Happy People was actually for Herbie Hancock in an indirect way. The first thing is I was trying to document Pharrell Sanders and I, we play together a lot, and I wanted to put, put some music down. Not with the idea of a live CD, but just to document it. And then the live CD kind of came later. The story is in itself about the relationship that I have with Pharrell, the relationship that I have with Miles, had with Miles Davis, you know, the, the, the influences of the, the musicians who played with Miles. You know, that's what Sketches MD is about. My fans have always wanted to hear me do a live CD. The audience didn't know that we were recording, the band knew, but they didn't know. So it wasn't like, because sometimes when you know that you're being recorded, you can freeze. So the engineer was kind of tucked away, and people didn't really know what was going on. We were just playing the music. I didn't want it to feel like, you know, we're trying to document ourselves that people had to know. Or we had to know, just forget about that and just let the music happen. And that's what we did. Farrell is my friend, first and foremost. He's um, a, my mentor. Uh, we have this relationship where when he's in town playing, I go and sit in with him. If I'm in town someplace playing, and he hears about it, he'll come and sit in with me. But our relationship actually started maybe in 87, around 87, 88, uh, when I was playing at uh, Kimball's East. Farrell came out and he heard, he said, I'm here to see Kenny Garrett. I was behind the curtain, he didn't know that I heard, and I was like, wow, Farrell Sanders came to hear Kenny Garrett, you know, so that's when it started. So probably around, I'd say 87, 88. What I like about Farrell is that, um, you know, the, the more we have a relationship, the more I start to understand him as a person. I think in a lot of ways we have similarities. He understands where I'm coming from and I understand where he's coming from. And I think, you know, he's opened up to me a lot about John Coltrane. You know, sometimes, you know, the older generation of musicians, they don't open up as, as easily as the younger musicians. And I think for Farrell, for him to allow me in, you know, to, um, to, you know, to understand John Coltrane. He stood on the bandstand with John Coltrane. You know, I stand on the bandstand with Farrell Sanders. You know, to me, it's, it's, it's great, you know, to have a friend, you know, and a mentor. You know, we mentor each other, but still, he's my mentor because I love the organic uh, way he plays. I mean, in the younger generation, we're about playing a lot of notes. He's about playing a sound and making it mean something. So there's a lesson that I learn every time we're playing. You know? Of course, we know we have the great Pharrell Sanders on the tenor saxophone. We have Nat Reeves on the bass, who's actually been with me for, oh, I mean, we came to New York together, you know. And um, so he's played on so many of my CDs, so he's been my backbone, you know. Um, you have uh, Benito Gonzalez, who's a young and up-and-coming piano player. Uh, people have to look out for him. He's going to make some noise. Uh, he's from uh, Venezuela, and he's only played with me for about a year. And then there is um, Jemiah Williams, who comes from this Houston string of drummers. Jemai is another guy we've got to look out for too. You know, he's, he's really making some noise. The Ring was actually a, uh, a composition or an idea. Uh, I remember I was at Farrell's house just hanging out and we were practicing these overtones. On the saxophone you have overtones. And so I came up with this kind of snippet, you know, for melody. And so Farrell said, why don't you work on that? And so I went back and I kind of worked on it a little bit. I called Farrell, it wasn't quite there. And so when we decided to record, that was one of the pieces that I put together, you know, for the, for the CD, which is the first track, you know, the ring. Uh, the second one, which is Intro to Africa, was another tune that I was thinking about, you know, just from, not just from, just from a, um, a black experience. Because when you think about the, the first part of it, it's really gospel. Then as it, um, it goes into a part that's more like a jukebox. You know, when people used to listen to jukebox, they'd say, oh, this is my song, that's my song. And it goes to that. And also, there's another section that goes to Africa. So I'm connecting all of it. It's not only African American, it's the whole black experience. And so when I played this song at the, uh, the sound tech for Farrell, he almost lost his mind. He started singing. And so that's how the singing came about. The sketches of MD is, um, you know, it's, it, that one's actually a little sentimental for me because, you know, my experience with Miles Davis for five years and a half, you know, to, 
to play with a great like that and to absorb all of this information. And so what I tried to do is to, to let people hear that that was part of my history. You know, a lot of times when I'm playing, people hear the Coltrane influence, but they don't really hear the Miles Davis influence. So that was just a little bit of them, the pieces of that, for them to hear the different melodies. It wasn't about how much saxophone I'm playing, but how many melodies, different melodies I could play. Uh, Wayne's Thing is a tone, a song that I wrote for Wayne Shorter, which uh, Wayne has this way that he phrased, phrases on the saxophone, and I, he goes like, Ballup. So I wrote it to him. So I'm using Wayne's inflection for this song, you know. Uh, the last song, which is Happy People, is another one that people just love, you know. And uh, I've, I travel the world, you know, I've, I've been to Japan, to Korea, uh, you know, to, uh, to Europe. And when I get to this song, there's something about the song that brings people, it brings, you know, this, um, this, this, I guess it, it just, they can't control themselves. There's something in this song, you know. I guess it's for the happy people. And if you're not happy people, by the time you come out, you will be happy people. You know? well, I love to perform live because the audience gives you energy back. I mean, we're, we're giving a lot of energy. Um, and so what I'm trying to do, I want the audience to, to, to know that it's okay. If you feel something, you can, you can shout out. You know, if you feel something, you want to get up and dance, that's fine too. It's just, we're here, you know, to, for them to, to have a good time and forget about their problems if they have any, you know, but just have a, have a good time. Uh, you know, Ridium is, is a club that I probably in the last maybe four or five years, uh, I was looking for a new home because I used to go play at another club in New York and that was my home. So once I moved uptown, I wanted to you know, find another place. So when I got to the Iridium, they, they welcomed me with you know, open arms and I went and I started performing with my band a lot and then with different bands. So it became like, you know, my home. I'm influenced by, by, or just by life, really. I mean, I try to listen to any style of music possible. I mean, because I'm always searching, and I don't want to stay in one place. So I listen to hip hop, I listen to classical music, I listen to Middle Eastern music, I listen to Chinese, Japanese, anything, Turkish music, I listen to everything, and I try to draw from that what I'm looking for. My experience with Miles was a little different than a lot of people. I was there the last five, five years of his life. And there was a lot of respect and love that he showed me. I mean, if you've seen some of the uh, some of the footage of like me playing Human Nature, during that time, people didn't give you know a saxophone player you know 15 minute solos, 10 minute solos. So for me, it was a lot of respect, you know, for him to say, okay, go ahead. You know, this is my platform, but I want you to show people. But I think the thing that that sticks in my mind about Miles is that he really taught me how to just be myself. You know, you know, regardless of what the critics think about you know, your music, about you, just be who you are. And so that was one of the, the biggest lessons you know, that I learned from Miles, just be, just be Kenny Garrett. And that's, that's what I do. I play my music and try to find it. And you know, sometimes it takes a little longer for people to, to understand it, but I think once they get it, then everything's all right. It, all jazz doesn't sound like this. This is a Kenny Garrett experience. You know? And so this is what this is. This is a Kenny Garrett experience. So I think everyone should have an opportunity to hear it.